We would like to welcome you this evening to Calvary Baptist Church in Larksburg, California in our evening, Wednesday evening prayer meeting and Bible study. For our Bible study this evening, we're turning to Matthew's Gospel and Chapter 6. Uh, this is a part of the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew Chapter 6, we're going to be reading and looking at verses 1 through 4. Uh, it has to do with our giving. If you can, I invite you to stand in honor of the reading of God's precious and wonderful word. Matthew chapter 6. Jesus said, Take heed that ye do not your alms before men, to be seen of them. Otherwise ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. Thine alms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will bless the word of God to our hearts tonight. And we thank you, Lord, for the privilege that we have as believers to be able to give unto thee and to give to the needs of others. And so teach us, our Heavenly Father, tonight what your will is and how we're to handle uh, our giving. We pray your blessing and we praise you in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. When we receive Christ as our Lord and Savior, one of the things that Christ did was give us his righteousness. But we are also to grow in righteousness. Uh, and true righteousness must be applied to everyday life. Uh, it's uh, too many people, I think, even Christians think that righteousness somehow is showing up to church. Uh, and that's about it. Uh, but it's, uh, it is a part of our lives. It's, it's how we conduct our lives. It's how we live our lives. How we interact with God and how we interact with other people and uh, all of the things that we do. It, it involves everything. Uh, the emphasis on the rest of Christ's Sermon on the Mount, chapter 6 and 7, uh, actually um, is just that. What does true righteousness look like in a believer's life? And Jesus will cover a number of different subjects here as he goes along. He related this principle to our relationship to God in worship in Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 through 18. Uh, also in our relationship to material things uh, in uh, Matthew 6, 19 through 34, and then our relationship to others in chapter 7. So, we're going to be looking at the first part this evening. Jesus also warned about the danger of hypocrisy. Uh, if you'll notice, first of all, and I want to touch on that before we go on, uh, in uh, verse uh, 2, for instance, he says, Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and in the streets, that they may glory, uh, have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Uh, then look at verse 5. Now we're going a little bit further, but I just want you to see this. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto thee, you, uh, they have their reward. And then verse 16, Moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Uh, what would happen is, is that uh, when the scribes and the Pharisees or people who followed them and wanted to be like them, uh, if they were given, they wanted everybody to know it. 
Uh, if it uh, was in the synagogue, for instance, uh, I think you remember, I, or not in the synagogue, I'm sorry, but in the temple area, uh, there was actually an area where uh, these kind of like cones came up out of the wall and you would come and drop your money into that. And some of them would come along and they would actually bring somebody along with them who would blow a trumpet. And so it'd get everybody's attention and then they would put their money into the treasury. And of course, you remember how Jesus pointed out the widow who came along and dropped in her two mites. And of course, she didn't blow a trumpet, that's for sure. Uh, he said, well, these same kind of people, uh, when they pray, they like to pray uh, out in the open so that everybody sees and hears them. And actually, they make it very plain. Can you imagine? They would stand on street corners and then have a prayer meeting. Uh, and be very loud, and so, you know, people would stop and hear them and see them and be very impressed. Uh, even if you fasted, he said, what these people would do is that they would, they would cause themselves to look really uh, down. They would, they would want people to know that they were hungry. Uh, they would kind of uh, deface their faces and everything so that you, when you saw them, you really felt for them because, oh, boy, they were really suffering for as we would say today, Jesus. And, and so everybody would know, and they would, they would be very doughty and all those kinds of things. That's what they were doing. Now, a hypocrite is not a person who falls short of their high ideals or who occasionally sins because all of us do that. Uh, a hypocrite is one who deliberately uses, in this sense, religion to cover up their sins, and to promote their own gains, to promote themselves. Uh, the Greek word transferred hypocrite, I'm sure you've heard this before, uh, originally meant an actor who wears a mask. Mm -hmm. Now, in the Greek plays and everything, that you didn't, they didn't always wear a mask. In, in, those, in their days, women were not allowed to be on the stage. They couldn't be a, uh, an actor or an actress. Uh, but uh, somebody who would play one would have to wear a mask uh, to look like a woman, or they would wear a mask so that people knew what kind of a person they were uh, play-acting, they were projecting. And so the mask would, would tell you that. And they had certain masks, and you'd just see it and say, oh, yes, I know, that's a, that's a criminal, or that's a, uh, this or that, the other. And so that's where the word originally came from. Somebody who is masking who they really are and pretending to be somebody else. And that's what we, that's what a hypocrite is, isn't it? Uh, so the righteousness of the Pharisees and the scribes was very insincere. It was, it was dishonest. Uh, what they would do wasn't because they glorified God or loved God or, or it was so that they could get attention to themselves. Uh, they practiced their religion for the applause of men, uh, not for the reward of God. Uh, and both are wrong motives. Uh, almsgiving uh, gained the favor of God. Uh, they did it... Uh, to get something back from God. In other words, I give to God so he'll give back to me, and also that others would see what I've been doing. Uh, I want others to know that. No amount of giving, we know, will purchase salvation. Uh, salvation is a gift of God, not of works, as any man should boast. And to live for the praise of others is really foolish. Because the glory of man doesn't last. Uh, and, and, you know, we live and we see all around us this all the time. Where people want others' praises. Let, let me give you one. There, there is a balance in all of these things. Uh, I have always struggled uh, as, as a pastor uh, with, um, and, and I don't do it here very much, but... Uh, when, when I was in Dover, I would always, I think almost always stand at the door. We had actually a couple of them. Um, there was a downstairs lobby and you had to come down and everything. 
And and sometimes, you know, I'd be I would stand there and and uh, people would come through and and of course people are polite and you know some people will say you know oh, that was a good sermon and and you know and and, and and other people don't say anything thankfully I always had a trouble with it I'll be honest with you because if it was it's God's glory not me but I know my heart I I, I know what's inside here. And I know that I kind of like to hear that. Uh, and so I struggle with it. And so sometimes I, I didn't want to be there. I didn't want to hear it. I didn't want anybody to say anything. Uh, because I, I had enough trouble, you know, with it. If, if it seemed to have gone well to think, oh boy, I really did good today. And then somebody comes out and says, "Woo, that was great, you know. And then psh, there goes the head. Uh, but at the same time, and you have to learn this kind of thing. There are genuine compliments yeah. that you can accept, and and when your heart is right about that and everything, and and you don't rob people of saying, "Well, don't ever say anything to me," because if God has blessed something to them, <laughs> uh, you know, when Pat plays and somebody comes, boy, you know, that really was a blessing mm -hmm. to me. You know, that is a blessing, and we we appreciate that. And so there has to be that balance. But these guys were looking for praise from others because that's what fed their egos. Uh, that's what made them feel the best. They really, as far as we could tell, I know we don't know their hearts, but Jesus knew their hearts. And what Jesus basically saying is their hearts were not wanting to please God. They wanted to please themselves. They wanted to please others. Um, it's the glory and the praise of God that counts. And one of the sad things is that we see in religion, uh, for instance, like the Roman Catholic Church and, and in Buddhism and many other religions who place a lot of emphasis on these kind of exercises, uh, prayer, giving, fasting. Um, in fact, uh, the false prophet Muhammad uh, taught his followers, and is still taught to them, that uh, prayer would carry a man halfway to paradise. He said fasting would bring him to the gates of paradise, and giving alms would gain him admittance. So that's their teaching. And so they do it because of what he's telling them, this is how you're going to get to heaven, mm -hmm. <clears throat> by doing these three things. Mm -hmm. uh, now, understand, Jesus is not condemning these practices. Uh, if, if you'll notice here, he very clearly says that uh, this is what we uh, do, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. But he's condemning how and why people pray, give, and fast. Why we do it? What is the reason? I think we have this thing uh, it's a little bit in, in some, some modern worship, uh, where if you're in a congregation that happens to raise their hands, which is fine, there's nothing wrong with that, but uh, you get a little uncomfortable, wouldn't you, if uh, everybody's standing and waving their hands and you're going like, well, I don't feel like doing that right now. But what do you do normally? If you ever been in something like that, I know what happens. You, well, I, I got to join the crowd. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have to wonder about half of the people may be joining the crowd mm -hmm. just to fit in. That's not what God has called us to do. Now, on the other hand, if you're in a church like ours or something, and you don't never see anybody raise their hand, uh, and somebody goes, hallelujah, amen, that's fine. That, that a spontaneous thing, that's great. Somebody says, amen, hallelujah, that's great, that's good. Uh, I think I might have told you years ago, we... Uh, at one time, uh, went to a church, and um, Connie actually didn't go there. We tried it out, but I did go there when I first went to college, and 
there was a group of men. They didn't sit with their wives or families. They sat down here on the first two rows on the right-hand side, you know, facing this way. And when pastor preached, amen. Amen, brother. Amen. We called it the amen corner. That's where that comes from. Yeah. And, and some churches had that. Uh, and tell you the truth, sometimes they weren't listening real clear. <laughs> Every once in a while, they'd say amen to something they shouldn't have said amen to. <laughs> he one time was preaching. He was really going one, and I was there when it happened. He was going one night, and he was really preaching, and, and he, they were just amening and amening, and all of a sudden he said, he said, Satan's a fundamentalist. And they all went, Amen. <laughs> like, seriously? <laughs> you want to think about what he just said? <laughs> so we, we have the same problems. <laughs> so the first area that we want to consider that Jesus talks about, we'll just talk about this tonight, is our giving. Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. Now, the giving of alms, it is not talking about our normal giving, all right? What it is talking about is giving to the poor. But I think there's a general principle here in truth to begin with, and it can apply to all of our giving. Uh, and, and alms was giving money, it was giving food, it was giving help, uh, any commendable work to, that you gave to the poor, anything that you might do. That's what alms were. And so Jesus is saying here that it's to be done in secret, not to win the applause of others. Uh, there is, a, I'm not sure when he did this, but a fellow by the name of J.B. Phillips, who uh, did a translation of scriptures, and, and it's, uh, it's not exactly a paraphrase, but it's, it's a little bit like that. And so he translated chapter 6, verse 2 like this. He says, when you do good to others, don't hire a trumpeter to go in front of you. Let those play actors in the synagogues and the streets who make sure that men admire them. And that's really the gist of what Jesus is saying here. That's what he's talking about. Jesus says that these people have their reward. Uh, notice he says here um, in verse 2, Therefore when thou... Thus alms do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites in the synagogues and in the streets, uh, that they have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Mm -hmm. That phrase, they have, was a Greek word that meant uh, you received a formal receipt. So what God, Jesus was saying was, when they, when they do this publicly, and people, in one way or the other, acknowledge that they got their reward. Mm -hmm. That's it. That was their reward. That's their that reward. Was. And that's it. Jesus. Nothing more. Because when you get a receipt, that says that's all you paid in, and that's it. And so that's all the payment they got. Mm -hmm. When they got to heaven, if they, were, if they were believers, they didn't get any more. Mm -hmm. God didn't come along and put his arm around and say, oh, well done. You gave so much to the poor. Mm -mm. They already got their reward. Um, and that's what they were looking for. And so they got nothing more. They just got what they were looking for. An example today would be uh, there are people who give the charities to get a tax exemption. <coughs> so that when they do their taxes, they, uh, they can count their charitable giving. So it lowers their taxes. Now, there is absolutely nothing wrong for getting the deductibles you deserve on your taxes. So when you give on to the Lord, we give you a receipt or something, you send that into the, um, you know, the, your accountant, or you, if you do a short form, you, you're allowed to put that on your short form. That's one of the only things you can put on there, just about. And you're, that's right. There's nothing wrong with that. God, Jesus is not condemning that at all. Uh, what he is saying is, is that, why are you doing it? If you're giving only to, for instance, some people would give because 
they think God is going to bless them because of their giving, or you're giving it because you want a tax exemption, then it's the wrong reason. So don't do it for that reason. Because you're, you're, you're getting the reward you want. Um, now, it's interesting when you see this, that Jesus, as I said before, is not condemning they're doing these things. Notice these verses. Notice in verse um, um, 3, when thou doest alms. He doesn't say if you do alms. Okay, you see that? He says when you do alms. Uh, when you, if, he doesn't say if you pray. He doesn't say if you fast. He says in every single one of them, when you do that. He's assuming you're going to do that. Uh, the lesson isn't should you do it or not. He says you will be doing it. If we're a believer, then those are the things that we will be doing. It'll be the natural part of our Righteousness, the natural part of our good works, the natural part of our Christian life. So he's not worried about or concerned about when we give or pray or fast, but again, why do we do it? And what starts out as a desire to be all that God wants us to be can, can degenerate into a duty. Um, you know, maybe when you first get saved and the offerings pass, and you hear the you know, giving to the Lord, and you say, oh, praise the Lord, I get to give to the Lord, and so you give something and everything, and then later on, you know, as time goes on and everything becomes a habit, but then you may start, you know, saying, gosh, this is a tough month, I don't have too much, oh, I have to give to God, and, you know, and so it, it degenerates into that sometimes, becomes a duty. And eventually it can even become an empty display. Uh, one of the things, and, and there's, understand, and we talked about this before, but passing the plate is, is perfectly fine. However we take an offering is, is, is wonderful. But I know also that passing a plate sometimes puts people on the spot. Mm -hmm. One of the things we talked about a number of years ago when we were in Dover was the fact we didn't want the unsaved to come to church and feel like they had to pay. Uh, and, and, and when you're sitting there and the plate is being passed and, <laughs> you know, you, and everybody gives and it comes to you, I know because when, we, when you visit a church, right, you visit a church, now, we've already given unto the Lord, you know, and, and when we give and everything and now we're, on vacation, we're visiting a church, and you feel like, well, I gotta, I gotta give again because I'm gonna be embarrassed. The people are gonna think, what's wrong with him? Oh, it's not very. That's not why we should. Now, we usually do because we think, praise the Lord, we are here, we're worshiping with these folks. We want to be a part of this ministry in any way we can. But if we're only doing it so that we save face, uh, it's the wrong reason. It's the wrong reason. <clears throat> Uh, and that's what was happening with the Pharisees. I think that, that the movement, which was, uh, they were very pious, they were very godly, about two, 250 years before, uh, they really wanted to give unto the Lord. You see it when they were building the temple. Uh, you see it you know, when they came back from Babylon and how they made huge sacrifices to be able to do that. But eventually it became a duty. Eventually it became you had to do this. You had to do this all the time no matter what. Uh, and, and our sinful nature is subtle. Uh, we can get, turn good things into poor. We, we, we just, that's just the way we are. Uh, if our motive is to get praise of men like the Pharisees, we call attention to what we're doing. But if our motive is to serve God in love and please Him, then our giving with a gift is without calling attention to them. And when we do that, we actually grow spiritually when we're giving for the right reason. And God is being glorified. <coughs> Others are being helped. But if we give for the wrong reasons, then we rob ourselves of blessing. 
uh, the reward and rob God of his glory, uh, even though the money we share may be helping others. Now, here's a question. Does that mean we should never give openly? That we should never pray openly? Um, does that, is that what Jesus is saying? Well, it might seem that way, right? So how do I know? Because he's saying here, don't do this publicly. Later when he talks about prayer, he says to go and pray in your closet, <coughs> which means that this prayer meeting will have to end pretty soon because we'll all have to find a closet somewhere. <laughs> Should all of our giving be anonymous when you put something in the box? Should you have not your name on an envelope? Hmm? We have to think these things through. We have to think them through. But how do we know? We search the scriptures diligently. In Acts chapter 4, turn there. Acts chapter 4. Remember the church was very young, very new. There were a lot of needs. There were people who had come from different parts of the Roman Empire to the Passover, and they stayed over when they got saved. Many of them had needs. There were others who came to know the Lord, and they were people who were poor, who did not have much. <clears throat> now, in Acts chapter 4, beginning with verse 34, we read this. Neither were there any among them that lacked. That is, all of the people who got saved. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them, brought the price of the things that were sold, laid them down at the apostles' feet. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. They were giving how? Openly. Openly. Publicly. Okay? <clears throat> and distribution was made to every man according as he has need. So, Really, the apostles received it and then gave it out to those who had needs. And Joseph, who by the apostles was called surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it, brought the money, and laid it at the apostles' feet. It was publicly known who did that, wasn't it? Barnabas. So, everybody knew in the church. But what was his motive? His motive was not for the glory of himself. It was given the Lord. It just happened the Holy Spirit mentions that here for us to see that. When the people, members, laid their money at the apostles' feet, it wasn't done in secret. So giving publicly is not what Jesus is saying, that you can't give publicly, that you can't give that no one knows. It's the reason we give, the why of it. And of course, the difference we see is in the next chapter, chapter 5 of Acts. There we have Ananias and Sapphira. Now, Ananias and Sapphira... They saw you see what's going on. Uh, I believe they were believers. But they see what's going on and they have some property. And they say, they, you know, they sit down together and they're, you know, it was a, it was a commercial was on TV and they turned to each other and said, uh, well, what do you think? And one says to the other, well, you know, I think we should do what everybody else is doing. And, you know, we got that little piece of property on, you know, the edge of town and why don't we sell that and we'll give it to the church? Now, I, I'm, this is, this is um, sanctified imagination, okay? <laughs> don't, don't go back and think this is, all of this is exactly what the scripture says. And so they, they go and they look at that property and they get a realtor to come and they say, you know, can you put this up for sale? And they say, whoa, you know, I've got somebody who really wants to buy a piece of property out here and they've really been having a hard time trying to get it, so... Let me contact him. The person comes along and says, well, how much you want? And they said, well, like, listen, I'm going to give you so much because I've always wanted a piece of property right here. And they get a really good price. 
and they come home and they got, you know, there's the check and it's like, ooh, I didn't think we'd go get that much. And they're sitting there and going, hmm, that's a lot of money. Well, what would be wrong if we maybe gave half? Yeah, and then we could, you know, we could get those new curtains, we could get the new house, <laughs> get the new TV, maybe get a new chariot or something, you know? And, and yet we'll still give, right? We'll still give. And so they come to church next Sunday. And they, Ananias comes up there, and there's the apostles, and he brings up, we sold some land, and here it is. We've given you all the money. And Peter said, why did you lie to God? And God struck him dead. And then his wife comes to church. Doesn't know what's happening. In fact, just before she got there, they carried her husband out. And she gets there, and Peter says, how much did you uh, pay, get, get for the, your property? Oh, we got such and such. Why are you lying to the Holy Spirit? And he was dead. Now, why were they giving? From the scriptures we know. They were not giving to glorify God. They were not giving to, to give others. They were giving to get the attention on themselves. They wanted that. And that's what Jesus is saying we're not to do. Give, amen. Give as God leads you, amen. It's grace giving. God has blessed us. Uh, and you can mark it on an envelope or not. You can drop it in a box or not. Uh, that's not the issue. The issue, though, is when you come into church on a Sunday, don't stand at the back and go, I'm giving! <laughs> and drop a ring. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for Christ's admonition here. We always have to search our hearts in, in, in all the things we do. So help us, Lord, to diligently search our hearts to give for the right reasons one because you have blessed us you have saved us you've given us the gift of salvation you've changed our lives you've blessed us in such incredible ways and it's just a joy lord it's a privilege for us to be able to give back to thee and you know lord you deserve it all back uh, but you don't require that of us you know our needs but you give us the privilege, the honor, the joy of being, give, being able to give unto thee and to give to others, to give to those we see in need. And I thank you, Heavenly Father, and pray that we will always uh, endeavor to have the right motive for the things we do for Christ. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.